So let's talk about one of the wildest, craziest uh, weeks I could remember in a very, very long time. Uh, you had a lot of uh, darts, bazookas, grenades, and everything else in between uh, pointed at the trade. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. I uh, hope everybody's doing great, right? Hope everybody's doing great. Hope everybody had, everybody had a great uh, week of trading. Hope everybody's having a great weekend and hopefully your life is, is working out uh, to all your happiness and all your uh, wish, wants, and desires. And hopefully, again, at the end of the day, everybody stays healthy so they can enjoy uh, another day. As I always say, any day above ground uh, is a good day. So let's talk about one of the wildest, craziest uh, weeks I could remember in a very, very long time. Uh, you had a lot of uh, darts, bazookas, grenades, and everything else in between uh, pointed at the trader. Um, if you guys remember just kind of a quick history lesson, uh, we lost the 20 day, we got to the 50 day, we lost the 50 day, and we had a three day dead cat bounce, uh, which was very, very, uh, which was very orderly, very ordinary, nothing really crazy about it. And then the day that was leading up to NVIDIA's earnings, we had this really aggressive rally, right? You can see this really, really aggressive rally, and we touched the 50 day moving average. And uh, always, like somebody asked me on one of the videos, Hey, Dan, I thought you said it was a dead cat balance. Yes, it's a dead cat balance until we reclaim the 50-day moving average. Any bounce in the market below the 50-day supply is a dead cat balance. Anything above the 50-day uh, is deemed bullish. And we got to NVIDIA's earnings on, uh, on Thursday's session, and NVIDIA blew out their numbers, right? Uh, absolutely blew out the numbers, authorized $25 billion dollar uh, buyback and the queues after hours were way above the 50 day moving average. If you guys remember, I recorded that video on Wednesday uh, that NVIDIA saved Christmas. Obviously, it was tongue in cheek, but it was a scenario that NVIDIA, because of its earnings, because it, 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 it really destroyed the top and the bottom uh, numbers and authorized that buyback and gave great guidance, the queues were like $3 above uh, the 50 day moving average. The problem with that is we didn't close above the 50 day moving average. And if you know what happened on Thursday, we literally gave it all back, literally gave it all back. And we never closed above the 50 day, 50 day. And the, the candles that ran up on the dead cat balance, the one channel, the one channel that gave it all back on Thursday negated three days worth of buying in that dead cat balance. And, you know, that's how we start the week. You know, we really start the week. We'll, get, we'll talk about that in a second. But you know, the volatility didn't stop there. Um, everybody was waiting for uh, Jay Powell's testimony to Jackson Hole. Again, he really didn't say anything. He, he really has not said anything in the last year. We, we know the ramifications. You know, the Fed is monitoring inflation. They're not happy where it is. They're always ready, uh, you know, ready to act. Uh, there's always more rate hikes on the table. It's the same language. It, it has nothing materialistically has changed in the last year, year and a half, and the market really reacted to that volatility. Um, the, the one thing I always talk about is being prepared on both sides. Every single video we talk about that. Either, even though we have a game plan, uh, we believe the data is going to play out like we want, but we always expect that X factor, the unknown. And that's exactly what we got on Friday. The only difference is we were prepared for a nasty pull, and we'll get to uh, the individual pivots in a second, but you had to think after uh, Thursday's really aggressive, disgusting sell-off, giving back not only uh, the 50-day moving average on the queues, but taking down, engulfing three days of a dead cat balance, you kind of knew that there was going to be more violence in store. And, you know, we, we talked about this uh, at Morning Strategy at length. Uh, we expected volatility. I expect it to be uh, in much more uh, scalp-oriented, aggressive uh, situations. And, you know, we waited for that poll. Uh, Jerome Powell stopped speaking. We got that poll. 
Um, and then we had this nasty rally back. And if, if you traded Friday's session, and I, I think I can speak for, for everybody who traded in the webinar, the moves are phenomenal, right? When, when the pivots confirmed, they were phenomenal. But boy, oh boy, if you didn't take your money, a dollar, two dollars, 50 cents, 70 cents, whatever it was, the snapbacks were ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And it really does show you that you can't just trade one way every single day. I mean, usual days that if I like a pivot, you know, I'll sit in that pivot, you know, if stock goes down, a, you know, whichever way, but let's just use it on the downside. If stock goes down a dollar, I'll take some off. If stock goes down another dollar, I'll take some off. And, you know, keep a runner, hopefully get some measure potential. Yeah, yeah. On Friday, we talked about it, you know, take your money, right? Take your money, use break even as you stop, because if you didn't, boy, oh boy, the market uh, just just took you, put you in a blender and just diced you up because that's how aggressive it was on both sides of the market. And I, I continuously uh, remind the new traders, if you don't understand the levels that the importance of every single level of every individual stock that you're looking at, including the Qs, the SPIs, uh, the IWM, we'll get to them in a second where they are starting the week. You're going to be trading blind if you don't understand where these supply zones are. Or you know, I, I still uh, continuously see random people talk about, well, why, why do you have all these lines on your chat uh, on, your, on your chart, Dan? They're irrelevant. I'm doing this for nearly a quarter of a century. Trust me, they're not irrelevant. The fact that you think they're irrelevant is the reason why you're trading blind. Don't be naive. The, you know, everything is there for a reason. People who trade for a long time, they have these things at their disposal for a reason. It's not there for us to look smart. We're idiots. I'm the king of the idiots. I'm not. Trust me. I'm not there to try to predict prices. I'm not trying to guess where the stock is going to be at the closing bell. I'm trying to get the the, the, the most feasible data, uh, the b biggest feasibility study I could have for the day, apply that data with all these lines, supply and demand zones, and make sure price action is confirming uh, both supply and demand. And that's why all these lines matter. Um, I think the idea of uh, being so uh, egotistical and being so arrogant to think that uh, you're trading two, three years, you have all the answers. You probably don't, right? You probably don't. You're in your first uh, couple of years uh, in this business. You're in your first inning of your career. So use people who've been in this business for a longer period of time as a reference point. Uh, you don't need to make fun or question or you know use you know use you know uh, snide remarks. Just try to take in everything an experienced trader tells you. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to like what they say, but at least take it for face value. Maybe someday. Uh, something will click and you finally rationalize that maybe your way is not the only way. And I understand two, three years of being a trader is this, uh, you know, really magic number that you have to understand everything, but you don't. And that's the whole point. I didn't, I didn't get at everything until about 10, 12 years into this business. So, you know, use every single year, every single week, every single month as a journey, as a trading vehicle, and really absorb what professional traders, experienced professional traders in the market is telling you instead of using your bravado to you know, put your, you know, try to impose your will on somebody else. Trust me, another professional trader doesn't care what you think. That's the whole point. Everybody's there to be self-sufficient, to take the data that they're seeing uh, off the research that they, that, they, that they find. So it's very, very important uh, to kind of soak it all in, be a sponge, and sometimes just watch the market from, a, from an unbiased point of view. Even if your uh, thesis is wrong, try to really listen and hear uh, what the market is saying. So how do we start the week? Okay, we are below the 50-day moving average. That's not a good thing. The ironic part about is starting around below the 50-day, here's some numbers that to start the week. Uh, the, the QQQs are still 36% uh, in the green, right, for the year. However, however, we are, we start the, you know, we start Monday $7 below the 50-day moving average, okay? And also we start three dollars below the five-day moving average 50 is obviously macro uh the five-day moving average is the shortest term sentiment so something has to give here the problem is again like we've been talking about all this period throughout the 50-day moving average the longer we continuously build the base the higher probability that we will start eventually going lower again and the only weird part about uh the setups going into monday's session there's actually some pretty good setups which is which is very very weird um, usually when you have a scenario that we are continuously building below the 50 day moving average, you just, you're not going to have a lot of really good looking or potential good looking, uh, ups, upside setups. Uh, but today, you know, eventually, you know, you, you, you do kind of here. So let me give you guys a couple of names here. Look at Tesla, right? We've been, I mean, Tesla has been absolutely great. Tesla's getting pretty tight here, right? You can see the, you know, you can see this whole channel here. You can see all these un, 
you know, all these uh, ridiculous lines that are unnecessary, right? There's a reason why the stocks hasn't moved up yet because of all these ridiculous lines. So let's talk about it like, you know, you're talking to a three-year-old. Tesla needs to get above these little squiggly lines, right? They do. Because what's going to happen is if you see all this channel here, this is all distribution and supply. If Tesla could get above the supply and reclaim back the 20 and, 20 and the 100 day moving average, it could actually wake up. The downside is, again, keep this in mind, it's still building below supply. So you have to watch both sides of the market. You have to watch the top of the channel here, right? You have the top of the channel here to reclaim back the 20. And you have to watch last week's lows if it reclaims back the five day. Because if it reclaims back the 20, it actually has room going into 250s. And the one thing that we actually did see uh, for Tesla going into this week, we actually did see uh, out of the money, uh, out of the money, I would think we saw 240, 242 and a halves, 245s and 250 uh, calls coming up for this week, which is very, very odd. But again, it doesn't mean it's going to do that. That's why we have to always watch uh, both sides of the market. Uh, look at a name like uh, FSLY, right? Really, I mean, this is a pretty nice looking chart considering how the market has performed or underperformed uh, in the last three weeks. This is a very beautiful chart. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts uh, reclaiming back, uh, you know, the top of this Bollinger Band. Maybe this thing could wake up here. Let me give you guys a couple of short names. Uh, if you guys remember, we've been, uh, one of my, again, one of my favorite uh, setups to the downside from a macro point of view is shorting stocks below their earnings lows to start the next leg down. You know, just a couple of just a couple of examples over the last few weeks. Uh, we had I had Snapchat uh, earnings low got destroyed. Uh, we had DOCN uh, DOCN uh, below its earnings low that got destroyed. Uh, we had Macy's below the earnings lows got destroyed. You kind of get it right. Um, on Wednesday, I started shorting uh, Urban Outfitters uh, below 34. Again, not a huge move yet, but you can see it's starting to move down. So the earnings low plays of working pretty well. Let me give you guys one for possibly this week if it starts to uh, confirm its earnings low. Look at Cargill. Man, look at that setup, right? Look at that setup. Cargill got blown up on, well, it's actually Car Genius. Some reason I Car Gurus. Some reason I call it Cargill. Don't ask me why. But uh, Car Gurus got uh, got uh, blown up on earnings, and now it's been just going sideways for a month. Again, doesn't necessarily have to confirm this week, but watch this thing below the earnings lows. If this thing starts losing the earnings lows, it could start uh, a really aggressive. Uh, it could start a really aggressive multi uh, multi move uh, down. So keep an eye on that. Uh, AFRM um, AFRM had nice earnings. Had really nice earnings. Keep an eye on this thing. Uh, for this week, it doesn't necessarily have to do it on Monday, but keep an eye on it for this week for a poten potential uh, continuation from Friday's move. Really, really good move on uh, AFRM on earnings. So that's that as well. And Disney, right? Disney had this really aggressive move down, had an inside day on Friday, basically rested. It was down three and a half on Thursday, up 80 cents on Friday. Keep an eye on Disney this week. If this thing confirms uh, 30's, Thursday's low, if this thing can get hit, uh, as well. So let's talk about uh, some of the pivots on Friday. Uh, again, we just sat there. I, I know I didn't want to buy anything into strength again, because when you have this much volatility and you have a potential violent event as a Jay Powell testimony, you're going to wait for this guy to shut his, you know, shut his lips and wait for the next measure, you know, next moves. And we were ready, man. We were definitely, definitely ready. We had a bunch of pivots to the downside. Uh, and again, here we go. We started up one by one uh, UPST, and again, not all of them had major moves, uh, but you could see the violence and especially how aggressive uh, the market was. So UPST 29.93, if it builds below, can flush. Here, here was UPST, right? It took down this 29.93, traded down to 29.30s. Uh, this is the lowest close in the whole formation, still looks lower uh, for this week. Uh, TDOC, nice move, 40 cent move on a $21 stock. Uh, 21.92, if it builds below, can flush. Here was TDOC. It took down that 2290s, went all the way down. Uh, this is a fake print. It never got the 2120s. I, I know I covered it. Uh, I covered my lowest cover was about four or five cents from the low. So I know for a fact it didn't come uh, to 21s. But nice, you know, nice move there. And then the rest I got stopped out break even. Uh, Tesla never got down to 228. Uh, Q's 361, if it builds below, can flush. You can see the aggressive nature of what happened here. Check this out just to give you an example how how really aggressive uh, Friday was. So. Uh, they lose, they lose right here, this 361, right? They lose this 361. They go down all the way down to 358, right? You see that, guys? Loses 361, goes down to 58. And if you didn't take on the way down, okay, or use break even as a stop, 
Q's reversed and went all the way back to 365 and then gave back $2 on the close. So the violence on Friday was, if you didn't trade on Friday, it's very, very tough to, to put into words. Uh, AMD, I don't think you put in a big move. AMD, 187 for builds below can flush. I didn't trade AMD. Uh, it, I think it only down. Yeah, it went it went down a dollar. I didn't trade AMD. If you got it, good job there. It only went down a buck. Um, I thought it went down less. Uh, Amazon, 31.15 if it builds below can flush. Here was Amazon. It got down right to this uh, 30.50s, which is the 100-day support. Uh, this is obviously the line in the sand. Amazon starts losing 30.50s this week. Uh, it's going to go lower. Again, not everything was a big move. Uh, Meta got killed. I traded Meta twice. Uh, Meta got absolutely killed here. Uh, 286, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, Meta, I mean, went down at one point, uh, down about 10. It lost its whole range, lost the five-day moving average, got really, really hit. Uh, let's see what, I know NVIDIA got hit as well. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA is 368.80, if it builds below, can flush. That's an understatement. Uh, NVIDIA, ever since it came out with earnings, just has, you know, it's basically sold off from roughly almost 520 pre-market to only 550. It's almost at 70 points sell-off here. Uh, watch this in the video for this week. You know, I want to watch this thing below the 10-day the moving average uh, if it starts violating uh, Friday's lows. So that was a big, big move on Friday. Uh, Disney, we're still watching, didn't confirm. Uh, and that is it. So incredibly aggressive, violent day. Uh, again, if you look at all the indexes, the Qs begin the week below the 50-day moving average. Not a good thing. It uh, needs to get above back. Again, we need a close above 371. Not, you know, NVIDIA did a, it did a great job, got everything there pre-market, and just the market never closed above, and the bulls uh, failed to reclaim the 50. But uh, we start below the 50-day moving average on the Qs. Uh, the SPIs, we are below the 50-day moving average uh, on the SPIs. And the Russell just never rallied. The IWM guys never rallied. Write down this area here, okay? It stopped at the same area. Guys, what, write this down for the IWM going into this week. Uh, 181.60, that's the line in the sand. If the IWM starts losing 181.60, I mean, this the, the, they never rallied. The Russell never rallied. So, you know, this thing starts losing 181.60 for all you guys who trade ETFs. This thing could really uh, start escalating uh, down. So guys, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate all, all your help, all your support. If you are brand new to the channel, all we ask you to do is like, share, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. It'll help the channel grow. It'll help to spread the word of unbiased technical analysis. Guys, have a great, great, wonderful week. For all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar this week, look forward to meeting you guys, look forward to working with you guys, and hopefully everybody is there with God's help. Guys, have a great, great Sunday. Take care.